okay so what are those things so what is essential for us to know <coughs> when we are learning diffusion applications which is the next generation technology of our clay based applications okay i'll start my screen share so just let me know if you can see my screen <coughs> Because I see some background noise. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so hope uh, all of you are able to see my screen. So before we get uh, started, uh, this is Suraj here. So who is going to be your trainer for your training program and I hold some significant uh, number of years in experiencing the fusion applications into development and into <coughs> deployment so all that we've been doing so over a good amount of time so I've got experience into Oracle SCM applications and also the fusion applications now okay so let's get started so once we get into the agenda of this particular demo so these are the few things that we cover part of it so we will know what is the fusion applications and what is the cloud computing technology the delivery models of fusion applications so the on-premise versus cloud platform the differences uh, technology functional and application changes when it comes to fusion applications and what is that we used to do part of EBS Oracle Fusion Architecture, Oracle Fusion Enterprise Structure and how does the look and feel have in, ca in case of user interface for fusion applications and finally we have SCM course curriculum so what is that we are going to discuss part of the SCM course curriculum so these are the things that we will discuss so let's get into the further slides okay so about the fusion applications so what is that you know we are talking about uh, fusion all the time okay and you know how does this particular technology arrived into the market so being uh, Oracle as a leader in EBS as a platform which already being used for more than a decade so where you know e-business e suit being implemented and used by a huge amount of customers but what does actually arrive uh, for Oracle to implement a new technology or you know, uh, you know create a new technology called fusion applications by taking all its products or all its peers I would say so where your Oracle JD AdWords, PeopleSoft, Siebel and eBusiness Suite, Hyperion and Prime there so these are nothing but the Oracle owned products so in this journey so Oracle has acquired all these applications so now when it comes to fusion applications so taking all these business products into consideration so it, it had to take the best practices or the best of breed things out of all these applications to build one, uh, you know, uh, the path breaking application, new application. So which actually reduces the cost and reduces the time to implement for any of the customer. So to compete with our own competitors who are existing in the market. So it has taken the best practices from all these applications which are nothing but the Oracle owned applications and built a new application called Fusion. Okay, so where the best practices from the customer experiences and the best practices and, and from the so, you know service line that part what we had part of uh, you know Oracle EBS and all these other applications so those are the few things to overcome what that we could not do it part of these particular applications so that are primarily focusing on those key areas of 
new application has been built okay which has a lot of inheritances from all these applications so that is where we've got the fusion okay so we will discuss elaboratively so what is that you know each application had at the best and you know now what is that it has been taken over to fusion to give you that best okay so I'll move on to the next slide here so as, as I said uh, so taking the best practices uh, from all these applications so it has built the fusion applications so where <clears throat> so when it comes to Oracle JD Edwards or PeopleSoft so JD Edwards is primarily known uh, for its procurement as a strong module when it compares to other modules okay so where uh, from JD it has been taken the procurement as a best practice and also taking our usual practices and what is that the functionalities that we could not do it part of Oracle EBS and our few things okay when it comes to even manufacturing was one of the key uh, asset or I'll say key point that used to have a lot of flexibilities okay so that has been taken into consideration okay the best of breed things taken into consideration from JD Edwards to build an application called Fusion so the same way PeopleSoft we had HRMS as the the best technology which was being used by most of the customers so what is that uh, the uh, the functionalities you know all those things whatever we had part of our people soft so those are the same things has been acquired to our new fusion applications so that is how we've got the flexibility being given in a much more advanced way so the things which you could not do it there so we are doing with the best practices and when it is Oracle Siebel so we had CRM so CRM was uh, one of the key player part of Siebel so that CRM technology has been grabbed and when it comes to Oracle EBS suit or e-business suit financials is one of the uh, best uh, you know modules or you know mostly implemented modules so as we said financials is the blood of the Oracle business suit so the best practices from there so it has been acquired to Fusion and when it comes to Oracle Hyperion the projects and uh, Hyperion is not the project it is the reporting and the prime vera is mainly used to focus on the project side so that's how we've taken the best practices from all these applications and even going forward so it is also quite flexible for the users who used to work in this individual technologies to consolidatively work on the fusion applications so that is how even for the customers and and for the people who work as a partners who work for these applications they find quite similar and you know, flexible to work in the fusion applications and also along with this so there are lots more other things so which are new in the fusion so those things we will try to understand the coming slides so I'll move on to the next slide so cloud computing as the latest next gen technology that's being used so what is that the cloud which we are talking about and the cloud is the uh, the main platform which is being used to build the fusion applications and in that when you get into the details of the cloud so you have again so different type of uh, delivery models available so first before we get into that we'll try to understand what is a cloud computing okay so maybe you might be knowing what is the cloud computing is all about so if, if someone knows about it or if anybody want to comment so just there you can you can tell me what is a cloud computing so just in your, your view so, in, so basically a cloud technology 
okay so what we used to do so when we purchase an application license to implement okay so we used to do the implementation of that particular application so in our own premise okay where we used to host the server in our own data center but here when it comes to cloud computing so the practice has been changed here so here we are using some remote server host in a different data center so it where we do not host our data center okay we, we host this particular application in some remote server or an interest internet store to manage and process the data rather than local server as a personal computer okay so that is what basically the cloud computing technology okay which we just hosted on a remote place okay so what is that the best advantages of it and disadvantages of it okay, we will try to know so that is what the cloud computing technology which is a platform for our fusion applications so we have here in this particular delivery models we have SAS, PaaS and IaaS as the delivery models so SAS is nothing but software as service PaaS is nothing but platform as service and IaaS is nothing but infrastructure as service so we will know what is these things are about clearly when you get into the further slides so here now you can see it you have software as service platform as service and infrastructure as service so when it comes to software as service okay a subscription based access would be given to the client okay based on uh, the number of users they use it so we will only give the access to the application so based on the number of users so client would pay it for it as they grow for now so they are using some x number of users for now and when they grow to y number so we will have again the terms and conditions would be changed and he will start paying more so this is kind of a subscription model the same way how we have making the bill payment for a mobile subscription or making payment for any subscription so this is kind of a SaaS model here so we will have the application in the cloud in the client place or whoever is the service provider place we will do not host anything of that particular server and we will only take the access and use the application and we pay for it so that is what your software as a service we will have to use the application as it is available okay so the next thing is platform as a service so the past application what we discussed here right okay the past is nothing but the platform as a service so here the customer would be given an access to play with the applications so in case of SaaS model the customer uses only whatever is <laughs> available but here when you need or when you're using pass application so you are when you are allowed to do some kind of a additional things which are compared to your pass application SaaS application like you know you can be able to do customizations you are allowed to have the access for your other applications like your SQL and all that okay so this is kind of a free or flexible environment where you will pay more compared to your SaaS okay so that is what your pass and the infrastructure as service which is the third technology or kind of a third delivery model here we will be the, we will get the access to the 
infrastructure which is nothing but the database on which you can be able to host anything any application so your infrastructure is yours you'll get the access to the entire infrastructure you can be able to get access to deploy any of your any of your applications so that is what the difference between these three so based on the type of model which you use okay so you will have the cost and you also have the flexibility to play with applications because current days so you know right it is all the requirements driven so there's there's no chance for you to say that we have a limitation with an application so when once the requirement comes so you have to be able to or in other words for the application should be able to do it anything whichever is required by the client so that is where we have all those practices which were not implemented in an application with the future generation cloud technology and on the left hand side if you observe so you have some of the key players which are into the type of delivery model when it comes to the cloud applications like your know, salesforce crm and lotus life or sas so salesforce is one of the you know elder or the older key players in the market who are now working on the cloud technology and you have windows azure at google ad at the past level and amazon web services where amazon would give access for you to use his cloud and you can be able to deploy whatever application you want so where infrastructure is provided to you by amazon and you can be able to host your applications and use the way you are so guys any questions till now hi raj uh, just this is baskar uh, shubham could you uh, mute your audio please Yeah. So guys, uh, feel free to interrupt. So let's try to understand collaboratively from your side and our side as well. Okay. So it should not be like only one way. So wherever you have questions, please feel free to ask. so i'll move on to the next slides so as we discussed about the delivery model okay so what type of delivery is available so based on that so what is that the flexibility you have here in this particular sheet or oh, sorry uh, the slide you will understand when it comes to saas application so you have application security database operating systems visualization server storage networking data center all these maintained by a vendor whoever gives you the access for your application okay where you will not have any kind of a privilege to write whatever you been given with so you have to use your application the way it is available okay the maintenance of the same is completely owned by a vendor okay so let it be a, an application or a security database operating system virtualization so everything related to your application the whole and sole owner is your vendor okay so you are only a tenant the way you will come to an apartment to rent it and you pay a monthly and you don't hold any of the privileges to do modifications to your flat of your flat you will have to live the way it is and you have to come out if you want okay so the way you have here the saas model available okay and the next thing is your pass so where it is application is managed by you 
okay for an example let it be an oracle or any other application so the application is managed by you and the other than application so everything is yours uh, sorry it is maintained by the vendor let it be a security database operating system and all these other key aspects would be handled by you where in this particular pass application you are allowed to do the customizations and you can put your own views according to your requirement so there if you take the example of what we've taken in case of SAS so you can be able to modify a few things from here to there in your flat okay so you can be able to make changes according to your change or according to your requirement okay so here you're allowed to do that okay so the application is maintained by you and other things are maintained by your vendor and when it comes to infrastructure as service so you you are given with a flat an empty flat okay so just you put on whatever you want okay so the flat is completely yours so it is kind of a lease to you okay so you have taken a lease and you can be able to host anything on it so an infrastructure itself is yours so you can be able to have your applications your security wise application and your database so these three things are available for you and the other things like your operating systems virtualization server storage and all that it will be maintained by your vendor so when it comes to the flexibility from the previous to the models so in the infrastructure as service so you have more flexibility so that way so based on the type of delivery model you choose you will have flexibility so you will have to decide when you are implementing or when you are planning to implement the fusion applications what is that delivery model which you are going to do so based on the based on your requirements and based on your existence into the market and based on the strength of your you know business so you'll have to decide so what actually uh, you know uh, appropriate what type of a delivery model is appropriate for the client to go for an implementation with the fusion cloud applications okay so here yeah. Raj, this is Ravi. Quick mm. question. Mm. What would be the example of virtualization uh, in this case? Virtualization. Yeah. Okay. So virtualization is nothing but uh, you know the type of vertical, you know, which is high, which you have with the applications. So application uh, in in case like of like you know manufacturing vertical or mm. maybe uh, supply chain. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Like banking and financial. Okay, fine. So that, I got that kind of a vertical it is. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Raj. Okay. okay. Uh, so, Raj, uh, Strini here. Mm -hmm. One question, like uh, when you say this pass, pass and uh, the other model. Mm -hmm. So when you say the pass, you said that the application will be owned by the uh, or managed by the uh, client who is going to use with the of fusion application mm -hmm. so in this case can we do the any customization or any uh, custom tables mm -hmm. creation or the form changes in the pass yeah definitely you can do it so pass I would say it is completely a developers ball game okay so it is for you or for the people whoever is going for a customizations simply by applying a, or you know taking a pass license Okay, when it comes to SaaS, you would not be able to do all these things. You will have to use the way it is. But PaaS, it is completely changeable or completely customized. Okay. Okay. And when when it comes to the uh, the last option, uh, I am. Mm -hmm. Is it something like it's the uh, the on premises uh, uh, one, or is it say, again it's a centralized cloud one? So you can have uh, your on-premise, you can have your cloud, they can coexist. So infrastructure itself is given to you. So there you can have multiple applications simultaneously running for you. So all that it is kind of a 
more uh, you know flexibility and uh, future generation uh, type of uh, delivery model here it is Thank you. So now I'll come to the on-premise versus cloud. Here you can see what is that the on-premise application do. So in case of the existing way how you know we handle the, uh, the application here. So when it comes to customer owned upgrades and patching, so we used to take our own time to do kind of an upgrades and patches in case of upgrading our applications. So we used to maintain uh, the support team for which we used to have some annual support costs. So the IT subcontract staff is required and managing own network and security access. So these are all, all this things we used to have. So CAPEX upfront investment is nothing but we used to invest upfront for the application. So when we are doing the implementation and when we are doing so the setup of our application. So database center and hardware cost including the disaster recovery. So this we used to the client is used to you know responsible for it and the client used to take the whole and sole responsibility and costly customizations created and maintained so whatever the customizations that we used to do with the help of the IT team here so they used to be quite heavy on our pocket and when it comes to maintenance so we used to not get much assistance from the product owner because it does not use to you know support much for the customizations so between the applications okay so outdated software resulting in missed business benefit so as the application is not being updated based on the time frame so we used to miss some of the best of the beat features being implemented into the latest application version and that you know we used to go ahead with upgrading whenever you know the business are required or whenever there was a feasibility for us to go for the upgradation. So that is what actually caused to miss some of the functionalities or features so which were useful for our business. So these are some of the things which used to happen in case of our own premise but when it comes to cloud it is completely different. So it is kind of a tailor-made technology for us so where you can rent flexible service pay as you grow so that is what your subscription model right so the way you use the application so based on the number of users or number of uh, the type of uh, you know usage you pay for the product owner or the vendor and so here the security uh, and the access you can have it from whenever or wherever like you know we do not have any kind of a much uh, you know security VPN kind of an access further so based on the type of usage okay it's simply a browser which is needed for you to access and from wherever it is required you can be able to access and security and all that stuff is being taken care by your vendor so business super users that, uh, rather than IT support. So in case of the IT support, IT support is completely maintained by the vendor. So business users just take care of their daily you know, transactions and uh, you know, the, the daily device, their activities. And here the no upgrades but latest functionality via regular releases. So this is one of the best options to upgrade the application to the latest versions or get the releases of the latest uh, application release and to have the update based on the default thing which is available. You know the way we have our mobile application 
being uploaded or updated to our next uh, version. So the same way the application also does auto upgrade. So nothing too much worry much on that. So the vendor would take care of all that. So based on the regular intervals. That is how there is no chance of missing the best things for you to use it. Okay. So a monthly schedule actually happens in that case. So that is what your basic differences between your on-premise and cloud applications. So I would move on to the technology wise changes when it comes to EBS versus Fusion. Okay, so when you take about the servers, so in the EBS case we used to have a lab server, so here it is completely a web logic. Okay, web logic server. So we have no more holding that uh, you know Java uh, kind of a stuff, uh, which is required for us to open the forms. So it is completely a web-based, a browser-based logic, which works for us as a server. Okay, so that is what our web logic server and the user interface, which is. Form which used to be forms or JSPs in case of EBS. Now here it is the ADF. Okay, so it is the web pages which you are using. So here also Java is used, but it is completely a web based ADF technology. So where it is helps us to access the application on the browser itself. And workflows it is the PLX SQL workflows in case of EBS, and now it is Bipple an integrated application with Fusion, so which actually takes care of all the workflows. So whichever may be the workflow, you know, it actually takes care of all that and it gives you the best flexibility for you to handle, uh, you know, whatever uh, the processes to smoothly function based on the workflows. And reports, it is XML Publishers in case of EBS. Now it is BI Publisher. For with integrated uh, and available with the Fusion applications for you to quite simply <coughs> create your own analysis or reports which can be used like your dashboard or your regular schedules to run the reports. Okay, so the flexibility is much more here and analysis of the reports you can be able to do through Discoverer in EBS. But now we are doing it through OTBI, Oracle Transaction Business Intelligence. So which is kind of a <coughs> integrated thing to analyze and view graphically what is that the data which is showing and you know how does it can be best presented. So you don't need to worry about all those things. The system would suggest you what is that the best view for this particular data based on the data which is pulled or extracted by the parameters whatever is given so that way an OTBI is integrated and gives you a best flexibility to present the data in a presentable format so any questions yeah, feel free to stop me wherever you have the questions so I'll move on to the functional changes Okay, so here when it comes to accessing the screens or accessing the pages, so we had responsibilities in EBS, but in Fusion applications we no more have responsibilities. It is completely a rules driven access control or role based access control. So based on the role, whatever is available, so the user would get access to some of the set of privileges. Okay, so a payables user should have a payables administrator or manager role. A procurement user should have a procurement manager. So that's how we would give him the set of responsibilities only you call it as, but we do not hold the way we used to hold for responsibilities. Now it is the role and it has some privileges inherited so that it gives the privilege to access some of the you know activities so that is all based on the code 
So nothing to worry much. It is quite simpler mechanism. So the way you have roles and we have multiple types of roles. So what role actually does what kind of a job? Very simple to understand. Okay. So that's how we will be accessing the application with the help of roles itself. So there are no more responsibilities. And approvals, it is it used to be AME or workflow. So but here it is business process management and BIPL. So BIPL as we just discussed. So we can be able to write the conditions the way we used to write an AME. So like whatever is your flexible condition for you to work in case of this particular document approval. Okay, so the same way, either it is a purchasing document, uh, I mean purchase order or a blanket agreement, you can simply or flexibly write your own condition to reflect for that particular document itself. Okay. So that way you have a very very flexible way of writing your own conditions without the help of any technical people. So you clearly understand with whatever the dimensions or whatever the objects available part of the BPM or BIPL workflow for you to just drag those particular things and make it as a condition to work for your approval case. Okay. So that's how it is quite handy, I would say. And when it comes to data migration, so you had conversions. So we used to have some standard, non-standard conversions, but here it is all through FPDIs, file-based data Im imports. So as we said, taking the best practices. So it is an Excel file which is used, a macro editable Excel file. So for each of the type of data that we are migrating. So we have a respective template available. So those particular data templates we take and we'll key in the data and would simply load it to the UCM. So unified content management server is what we have been calling it as. So the way we had or we used to create a staging table when we are doing uh, the data conversion. So now we are using UCM to upload the data and from there, we will load it to interface. And from there, we will, you know, uh, relevantly pull it to whichever functional area it is when it comes to suppliers. So we go and import the suppliers in the supplier functional area. When it comes to purchase orders, we go and do it in the purchasing work area. So that is quite simple. You yourself will be very happy to know that it is quite simple now for you to just do the data migration. Okay. So setup and configuration of the applications. So you use you used to do it through an application menu, but here it is functional setup manager. So that means the screen where you hold all your offerings and its related options, and through which you will access the end task to perform the setup. So that area we are calling it as functional setup manager. Okay. So that is the change when it comes to fusion. So any questions here guys? So let me move on. So application wise changes. So what is that the application what we have in EBS and the way how we are calling it in the fusion applications. So the financials is what the financials the same thing we are calling it as financials only. So the applications HRMS now here it is HCM and projects is nothing but project portfolio management. The PPM we are calling it as okay so that is quite different in the naming convention and but uh, the the same same thing of uh, the whatever we used to have in an advanced way the same uh, flexibility of you know configuring or uh, requirements and all that options whatever we had similarly available here here so the database when it is used to be oracle database in case of ebs but here it is oracle and sbase so SBase is again a new 
technology which has been adapted for our fusion applications. So which stores the data in its groups the way we have tables in Oracle database, right? So the same way we have cubes which actually stores and retrieves the data in case of space. So wherever it is required, mainly in case of some financial applications or financial reporting, the space is used. Okay, so the, which is again an integrated application or database with the fusion application. And the way we had system administrator is a responsibility. So we have two of the different applications doing the same system administrator uh, responsibilities. Okay, what actually we used to do part of system administrator? Guys, anybody? What we used to do part of system administrator? So we used to create the users, we used to reset their credentials, we used to assign the responsibilities, right? Part of Oracle system administrator. So the same work now we are doing with the help of two different applications. Okay, so it the one is Oracle Agent Team Manager where you create the user, reset the user credentials and you assign the roles. Okay, and the authorization policy manager is another application. So with the help of which you will configure roles okay and you will uh, configure role templates which is another uh, you know key important aspect in case of uh, roles and you will be able to also assign the privileges to the user directly without giving a role to the user so that way there are two applications okay so all these things we used to do part of system administrator in case of uh, EBS so although we did not have the roles concept we used to do your responsibilities part of that now here we are doing the identity manager and authorization manager policy manager which are the applications available integrated with the fusion okay so next I will go further so this screen would have some high level information of how uh, the products and families available in case of fusion applications okay so this is where you have your financials your fusion projects and your procurement supply chain applications all that being built on your fusion moon middleware so middleware is a oracle owned technology okay on which any of your application in the fusion would get built and would be given access with so that is what your fusion middleware on this on the step two or on the number two you will be able to find you have enterprise crawl and search framework oracle enterprise scheduler and oracle fusion middleware extensions for applications so these are nothing but the fusion middleware related components so we are not much required to know about each of these things so these are something uh, you can call it as part of technical but here what we all need to know is it is the middleware as a platform which is used on which the Oracle Fusion applications is built and when you even come down you have our database available on the step 3 so uh, fusion application schemas, fusion middleware schemas, okay. So there are a lot of other uh, things which are available. So not much that we need to know about it. So but only things that we need to know is what is that the product family is available and on which it is being built. So the fusion middleware is something on which the every application of fusion is available. Okay, so now we are coming into the core application structures. Okay, so how do we have the enterprise structure being available over here? Okay, so this is where, so we will get into the application and we will try to figure out, so what is that the key change which is available when it comes to the multi aga structure of EBS and what is that the enterprise structure of fusion and what are the differences. Okay, so it is the enterprise which is actually 
the top or the head of any of the uh, application, I mean uh, the enterprise structure. So the way we used to have business group at the top, so we have enterprise available here on the enterprise. We have below to that division which is a new concept. Okay, so you can be able to have divisions of your business the way you are able to find this screenshot uh, which is available shows that you have multiple businesses which are nothing but your multiple verticals of your business. So the way you have some, you know, IT division and your manufacturing division and you know, the FMCG division it can be. So that's how it is quite flexibly for reporting purpose. It has been given for you to do the bifurcation of your business. Okay, so that is new enhancement here. So we have primary ledger the same way it is available and legal entity the way we had the same thing available here so the operating unit we are no more calling it as an operating unit so it is business unit now okay so there is a lot of difference between the way you used to define operating unit at in EBS and the way you are doing the business unit in fusion case okay so we have some new flexibilities to set up the business functions like you know what is that the business function that you're performing let's say that you know one of your business unit or operating unit only performs requisitioning so you are flexible to choose only a requisitioning business function not required to choose all of them so in case of EBS so we had no such uh, facility or flexibility right so here we have a business function choosing flexibility which is available. So in case of your ever-changing requirements like centralized procurement or shared service center pro procurement, you can be able to have this particular uh, scenario being helpful for you to you know, create those requirements and fulfill them. Okay, so that's how you have business unit, business functions available. And when it comes to town, so you have inventory organizations so department is one of the other uh, new entity which is also available so which is not available in this slide but we will discuss about it so why a department is used mainly for maintaining the employee data so the way we used to maintain the employee data at the business group level so now we are no more maintaining it at the business group so we will maintain at the department and we will you know map that particular department to the enterprise structure so that an employee data is also maintained okay so that is how we have this enterprise structure available in the fusion here so guys any questions so quick question uh, Raj mm. you meant to say like uh, the whole HR um, or the resources maintenance like human capital management mm -hmm. are those now maintained at department level rather than business group level yeah so we are no more maintaining at the business group level it is at the department level okay so how, how the sharing is happening you know uh, if the mm -hmm. same resource is uh, managing multiple departments mm -hmm. uh, is that resources is defined at multiple departments at a time no, we have a mechanism called uh, reference data sharing so that is again a new concept which has been acquired from a different application to fusion so here we maintain if the resource is being shared across departments generally we will associate a common set for him so where he will be commonly used across the departments and if it is specifically being used for that particular specific department only so we use uh, that particular department's data sharing set itself so that you would not be used across the some other departments okay so that is one of the other flexibility okay thank you yeah so any other questions we have so I'll move on to the application navigator so the, which is nothing but your you can understand it as your uh, you know uh, the responsibility menu 
So based on the type of role which you are assigned with, you will get the privilege like this in the Fusion Applications Navigator. Okay, so these are, you can be able to find the set of options. Okay, the set of options. So based on the functional area, for example, you can see it on the screenshot, which is the application screenshot, you are able to find some sales related options which are given. So based on the sales administrator or sales manager role which is associated to you. And the same way, and you have some contract management related uh, privileges which are also you can see it. So based on the contract administrator. Okay, so that based on the type of role which you assigned with, so it gets you some privileges. So there are, there, there are some seeded roles which are also available and there are roles that get generated based on type of setup entity what you set up and there are even few other roles that you can customize or I mean create for your own requirements so that is also possible. So here you will be able to see how you have the view or look and feel. So in case of the navigator of fusion applications. Okay so that is the thing over here. And this is nothing but the home page. Once you log into the applications, the icons, whichever you are able to find it over here, okay, you are able to find it. This, this you will call it as springboard icons. And you can also be able to find some dots available here. The first dot, which is selected now, which is nothing but the widget. We call it as okay infinite widget so the, the way you have widgets being added to your mobile let's it can be an android mobile or any other mobile so the way you have a widget being added so the same way, same way we will be able to add infolets here okay the dots you are able to see nothing but infolets on the first infolet which is selected now you have all the springboard icons which are basically the shortcuts for you to get into that particular functional area. So if you want to get into the sales, you will get into this, click on the sales icon, you will be able to get into the respective task which you want to perform. And if it is payables, you want to, if you want to view a payable invoice, you will click on the payables icon and we will go to the invoices option. And from there, you will go to the task list and view the invoice. So this way, based on the type of role, the privileges will be given to you and you will be able to authorize or you, you are authorized to access some set of tasks. Okay, so that that's how you have your springboard icons and your infolets available. Okay, for you to access all the things with ease. Okay, so without having any much effort, you can be able to access all the things in kind of a shortcuts. So this is all based on the roles again. Okay, a role which drives all these things. The next thing is supply creation related uh, screen, you are able to see it. Okay, so the way the supplier gets created and supplier addresses, supplier site and contacts. So all this. So any questions? So if not, we will move on to the next. So this is the purchase order creation. So on the right hand side, you are able to find the task list. So if you click on this particular page, which has some lines, you will be able to see requisitions, orders, agreements, and its related tasks. Okay, so the procurement manager role, which is actually driving this. So you will be able to create a purchase order and based on the approvals. Now you can also be able to see manage approvals as a button available, right? Okay, you can be able to see, figure out how the approvals are available, who are there available in the approval. And if you want to dynamically pull an approval, approver, you can pull and assign him part of your approval hierarchy. So all that is available. Okay. So identity manager is the screen where 
you will perform the system administration activities. So that is how you will query the user here. You are able to see users are selected right. On the left hand side, you query the user and then you will be able to find the user available on the right hand side and you can be able to select the user and you can be able to assign the roles and then you can you know uh, change its password or any other credentials available for the user so those are the activities basically it is kind of a middleware tool so which helps you to access the data of the users and set up the credentials and all that okay so this we used to do part of the system administrator uh, job so here we are doing it in identity manager the next screen given is sales order creation so how sales order creation is available here so it looks quite simple not so complex as complex as you know we had uh, the page in the sales order for EBS so currently it is this screen but you know as order management is still developing so not sure you know what actually it ends up to but for now you will be able to see the sales order like this and when it is entered next thing is the authorization policy manager actually the IDM and APM should have been kept at the same place okay in order to not to have confusion so APM is nothing but uh, you can be able to view the roles in the APM and you can be able to assign privileges to the user directly without even assigning uh, the roles so you can create new application roles in the authorization policy manager that way your APM is available so which is nothing but the middleware tool which helps you to configure your security okay so the way the roles is available you can be able to create your own roles part of APM and you can be able to associate the same in the identity manager okay so nothing to worry much we will be able to clearly understand when we get into the uh, you know theoretical or practical sessions of it so you'll clearly understand so what an IDM and what an APM is about and the next thing is your course content so you've got the course content or you want me to view it I think we got that but uh, uh, are you going to run through that like you know, read through that course content no problem I can do that I can do that so here the modules which are covered okay in the training curriculum so we can be able to get through the fusion inventory and product management or fusion purchasing cost management order management or the seeded orchestration flow whatever is available that we will see so accounts payables accounts receivables so it is not completely into the depth of uh, payables or receivables so only up to creating the invoice and making the payments and you know the way what is whatever is required for you to just access the payables responsibility and then access the invoice and then make the payments so up to that level whatever is required so you will be given with and even the same case with receivables and fusion functional setup manager so what is that you know we just discussed functional setup manager right so collaboratively so that is what an FSMS that we will discuss so identity manager authorization policy manager which are middleware tools part of the fusion based security that we will discuss and business process management so nothing but in case of our approvals how we handle and how it is how the BPM is used that we will understand here and a core application cycle aura uh, I mean the cycle of the business process so we will see procure to pay order to cash and we will also be able to see plan uh, planning cycle also in case of min max planning okay and inventory replacement uh, 
method called in min max plan that also we will see it. So I'll come down. So in case of inventory, so we have all these things. So when you elaborate to each of the topic, so you'll have these are some of the things that we would discuss. So fusion procurement, so these are the things that would be discussed and approval management. Okay, so whatever is required, so we will discuss that. So a few of the things which are not that much important, okay, and which can be explored with your own help, so that would be given to you as a task, so which you can simply explore and understand. Okay, so that is also okay. quite important for you to, you know, explore yourself and because it is not all the time that, you know, I speak and explain to you to get that subject or, or that, you know, requirement. It is all the time your help or, you know, your zeal which actually helps you to explore a lot of things. So that actually plays the key role here. So these are okay so let's come to here the course highlights so we will be able to get few of the other things as well so how do we use the rapid implementation spreadsheet so we have a new concept called rapid implementation configuration. So with the help of that, you can be able to simply load the enterprise structure with the help of an embedded worksheet, Excel work file. So that is a beauty of using application. So how do we do that? So we will understand here. So which helps you to define chart of accounts, ledger, legal entities and calendar, even business units also. Okay. So part of the enterprise structure configuration how do we load it okay so through a single upload you can be able to configure all these things so application helps you to do that on multiple steps but you know which actually decreases your effort of manually configuring it so by just keying in the data into an excel file you can be able to simply upload it to the instance okay and the next thing is configuration packages okay so if you are actually setting up instances for the client okay like the way we have the part of our implementation practice so we at the at least the minimum level we will have two instances right one is test and one is production uh, development and production okay but here you can be able to have your the way you used to migrate all the data and setup with the help of DBA but here you will be able to do it on your own with the help of the configuration package you can see it okay the configuration package actually how it actually helps you to move the data from one instance to another so that you can do it on your own without uh, taking the help of any other person and as a, as a, as a functional job and you can still be able to copy the existing setup activity uh, setup entity into the same instance for an example they have created two of the business groups and you want to copy one of the business group to another new business group okay you can be able to copy it with the help of this particular configuration packages or copying the data so that option is also available for your convenience so even we demonstrate that as well and next thing is so application integration related yeah we will discuss some key objects here so OTVI reports BPM approvals all that data conversion through PDA templates okay custom roles creation through security console so how do you create a custom role with the help of security console security console is again a new feature okay so how do you do that okay so these are 
few things that we would say as a highlights or you know some kind of a uh, you know key assets to our training okay part of uh, the curriculum so any any questions guys uh raj i heard about uh, some rest apis so what are those like are those would be covered and could you please like you know give some idea api yeah rest api right r e s t no no we are not covering anything as such okay but do you have any idea about that or no no but 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 no i actually have not heard about it Okay. okay. Sure. Thank you. So, any other questions, guys? So now it is open for you. So just ask anything whichever comes to your mind. Okay. So that we will be able to have a good idea of what we are 